Work is the transfer of energy from one thing to another. It results from applying a force over a distance. So you often see the expression just simply saying work is equal to force times distance. Okay, so we say that the work done by a force is the product of the displacement and the component of the force that's in line with the displacement. So sometimes you'll see work, it's a capital U, written like this, it's just F times S. Uh, but this is slightly incomplete. This is assuming that the force is in line with the, like the direction that the, the object is going to be moving or that the force is going to be moving. So it's a little bit more complete to write F is equal to F cos theta S, where theta is the angle between the force and the direction that the force is moving. So uh, this is going to be in units of Newton meters or joules. Um, so force is going to be in Newtons. Uh, S distance is going to be in meters which makes this whole thing Newton meters, uh, which is also equal to joules. So we have work is in units of joules. So imagine we have these boxes here. And we have some forces acting on them. So the first one is going to have totally horizontal force that's going to result in the displacement going that way. And if we have another one, a force coming in at some angle, then the displacement as it slides across the floor is still going to be horizontally to the right, which is not in line with the force. There's some angle there and we can label that on. The angle will draw a line that's parallel to S and we'll just label that as theta. So if we were to write out the expression for these, we have work is equal to F cos theta S. Well, in this case, uh, theta is zero because there's no difference in angle between F and S. So we can write that as, this is equal to F times cos of zero. We can even write it all the way out, times S. And cos of zero is equal to one. So we have U is equal to F S. And that's why you're seeing that sometimes written like we had up here, just U equals F S. Um, that is because that's for the case where the force and the displacement are in line. And for the example on the right, the expression is still just F cos theta S. That's going to give us the work done by the force on the object as it moves a distance of S. So we can just maybe apply some numbers to these. Let's say that F in both cases is going to be equal to 10 Newtons, just like that. And let's say that S is equal to five meters in both cases. And let's call theta here, let's call it 40 degrees. So in the first example where we have U is equal to Fs, work is equal to Fs, we have just 10 Newtons times five meters. That gives us 50 Newton meters. And Newton meters is the same things as joules, so we can say that the work is 50 joules. That is the work done by the force on the object. Now in the next case, we have U is equal to F cos theta S, where cos theta is not going to be equal to one. So we have uh, 10 Newtons times cos of 40 times five meters. And that gives us 38.3 Newton meters, which can also be written as 38.3 joules. So in this case, where the force is not in line with the direction of travel, the work done by the force on this object is actually going to be less than if the force, the same force, was in line with the direction of travel. And something really important to notice here is right here we have F cos theta. All we're doing is we're calculating the component of F that's in line with S, right? So that is this component right here. That is F cos theta, whereas this guy, this side of the triangle would be F sine theta, just from some basic trig. And so 10 times the cos of 40, that's just equal to 7.66 Newtons. And then if you were to just multiply 7.66 times five meters, that gives you exactly the same thing. So that is what we did here, but if you prefer to think about it that way by actually you're finding the component and then multiplying it by the distance that it's going, then that's a fine way to do it as well.